It is a positive represent representation of what minority gun owners look like in America. I can run a drill like you, I can perform like you, and I know more about the science than you do. And the fact that you won't study that and get educated is your own damn fault. While you're in security, get educated and move on. Now, all right, it's a recoil podcast. <laughs> What's going on guys? We are back. Shot Show 2024, Gators Eyewear Booth, Recoil Podcast. I got Kevin Dixie, the real NOC with me. Devin Parkins, Trench World Chronicles. We got a guest with us today, John Keys from Guns Out TV. How are you today, brother? Doing great, man. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, for sure, for sure. Good so, having you on. One of my favorite gentlemen right here. Oh, you know, I, I figured I'll return the favor. You've had me on a hey, few times, man. although I haven't been on the series, but you know. Oh, that, that's cool. Listen, we discussed this. We did, but it's, I wanted to bring it up in public. Listen, the, the bigger it gets, the greater it's going to be. That's that's true. I know you're saving the best for last. Hey, man, look, hey. you got to do something. Do something. All, All right, right now. Uh -huh. So, man, you know, tell us not only a little bit about you, what is Guns Out? All right, me, former Marine, 12 years of service, um, a a executive at heart. I've, I've held many positions at the Pentagon, uh, Quantico, currently work for a media company as an executive. Take all of that, ball that up. I bought a gun in 2020 and I went on a journey, right? I went on a journey of absolute exploration into the firearm space, into the Second Amendment community. And I was just, I, I was floored at what I didn't know. And what I didn't know was happening and what I didn't know that I didn't know. And so I just went on this, this, this experience and this learning journey of taking it all in, taking it all in. And I saw a very big gap. And that gap was res what responsible gun ownership looks like as a black man. And to be honest with you, that played a part in why it took me so long to get a firearm in the first place. Is because while I, while I was in the Marines, I was an expert every year, year over year, um, rifle and pistol. But I did not feel like I had a positive influence to become a civilian gun owner after I got out. All of my all of my examples were not positive examples. So I stayed away from that. I was like, you know what? I, I don't know enough about it. it. Everything in the military was a very ushered experience, right? They take all the liability. We just go out there and learn how to shoot, right? So becoming that gun owner in 2020 when the world was in chaos, I took it very seriously right up front because obviously I, I had a great respect for firearms, right? So get out in uh, 2008, almost 12 years later, 2020, buy the pistol and rifle, go down the rabbit hole, see the gap, and I wanted to be that difference. I wanted to represent that difference. I wanted to talk to people about what I had learned and been through and, and let people know that you don't have to use TV or people in underserved communities that's doing some of the wrong things as your example. There's other examples out here and I wanted to be an active part of that. So we stood up Guns Out TV to really highlight everything positive about the firearms community that I personally didn't know existed until I found it for myself because I had to seek it out myself. It's not front facing. It's not right there for people to just, you know, indulge in all the do all the other stuff comes first. All of the buffoonery comes first, right? And you know, we're not gonna call no names or, or point anybody out because it's all over the place, all race, colors, and creeds. There are people doing wrong things with firearms. But all of those things tend to come up first when somebody's looking at it, searching it, trying to use an example. So we wanted to create a space where we can create premium content that showcases positive firearms ownership, specifically in the minority community. So that's Guns Out TV, humanizing firearms culture. Wow. I gotta say, man, um, not only did it, not only is the origin of it great, the track and the path that it's went on has been accelerated. Like it, seriously, it you really guys has, has it, really taken it, it far. Really has, you know how many people right now or would say 2020, this guy had a mission and four years later, not only does he have a television show, him and his partner, Sir Mike, which I know can make it, mm -hmm. um, but not only do you have a television show traveling the country, look at the amount of people that you're inspiring, the amount of people that you guys are influencing in less than four years. I would actually like to add that, add to that and say, I'm gonna look at the camera. This is what happened when you're not lazy. Because if you're still sitting at home saying that I have a gift, whatever that gift is, mm -hmm. that you wanna to give to the world, if you're just still talking about it and not willing to execute it, if you can't find your North Star and stop making excuses and get up off your lazy ass and make it happen, then guess what? You'll be watching us again 10 years from now talking about, <laughs> damn it, I could do it better than them, but you never executed shit. So moving on. Yeah, yeah, right. no, no, it's, 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 you know, I'll use the term, it's bigger than rap, right? Right, right, you know, it's right. Like, it's like you got people that talk about it all the time, but nobody's actually doing the things. And I've, I've seen that. I've seen some very successful people in their own right that could have a very meaningful platform and do some very meaningful things, but they don't. And I don't necessarily understand why. 
So we kind of made that our mission to do that up front. And that's actually served us on the back end. And that's why we've been so accelerated this whole time, because it's not about us. It's not about how cool John Keyes is or how, how successful Shermichael Singleton is or whatever the case may be. It's about the mission. It's about what I went through. It's about what I realized. And it's about what there's not enough positive representation of. So that in turn has served us in spades, and I'm very happy to claim the success that we've been afforded. Yeah. I would have to give you a little bit of pushback on that. Please do. I think all of the high quality and, you know, you guys do the boutique stuff. Y'all are in Loudoun County, which is the richest county in America. Yep. The best firearms range you could get. I think all that plays into the fact that, yo, we can be in this space and do it at the highest level as well. We don't just have to be in here and be the status quo. We can do everything and accelerate past who was there before us. And Agreed. everybody knows what that means. But yeah. yeah. That, that's the only thing that I would say is that, nah, how all of that, that stuff How was is, that pushback? I feel like we said the same exact oh, okay, thing. Okay. You just, you truncated it, bro. Yeah, yeah, He's nah, controversial. Oh, is there, oh there, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what he wanted to do? Because, that was your controversial moment? No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. <laughs> this is about to be the controversial Oh, moment. talk to me. Let's go. Because I've seen you have a lot more success dealing with certain organizations that we have not. I will personally say I have not been okay. able to have that type of success with. Okay. What was it that you were able to do that opened them up to being able to support you. And I know it was not easy. Bro, I'm gonna tell you right now, that a is a brilliant question. And you're the first person to ask that. Cause I'm honestly, I'm just gonna be a very, very transparent one. I'm probably the only person that could say that to you based off of which organizations y'all work with. Okay. Because I was there, mm -hmm. I dealt with it. We essentially had, and he's been a part of it. We've essentially had a foolproof plan and it was just hands off. Wow. But you guys were able to accomplish something. So how did that? Okay, so here's, here's what I can say. First off, you know, between Shermichael and I, and, and like this is not us to, me tooting our horn, you know, there's a lot of pedigree there between me and him. Shermichael is impeccable as it pertains to politics and the p political sphere. Right. I'm a, a, a tenured Marine Corps veteran and I've excelled up the corporate ladder. Into, in, into really tight executive spaces. So together, when we come together, I mean, we really have, we know how to lay out plans. We know how to present plans, right? So that's the first part. The second part is, is that in year one, we got a lot of pushback from the black community thinking that we were not for the people, specifically because we were gaining those resources. I don't appreciate that specifically because what good is it yelling out, I'm a black man, I'm a responsible going on and I represent the community if we don't have no resources to bring back to the community. So we went out first and got the resources the business way and then we brought it back to the community and that's what we've been doing as you can see like if you look at our stuff on Warrior Post Society we highlighted TIG in in Atlanta we highlighted Ken Scott in, in Atlanta we highlighted uh, Mark Chopper on Chopper Day you know like we we really show there are people doing some good out there not that they might not be doing that good all the time but thank, we're gonna thank we're you gonna, for that caveat yeah, of Go course, ahead. but we will showcase that it's possible and it's there yeah. and all they need is the example and we need to bring that example to them we can't just be standing back over here doing our thing and being that example but not going into the space and bringing that example into the space. So that's what we started doing, but we had to go get the resources first. Yeah, you have to essentially get rid of all of the projections of people not understanding that they might have not have the ability to go into those rooms and have the conversations and not compromise, but you might be able to. Agreed. So I, I, I definitely respect that. I definitely respect that. And then sometimes, like, we have to understand, man. You know, and I think another thing that we can highlight, which I love you going into the, your background, I think a thing in the Second Amendment space that we don't do enough is highlight experiences that people have, yeah. right? Like, we're kind of bashful about it. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, like, you know, I'm not going to ever say I'm the best, but it's like, oh, you carry a gun, so you can't say that you actually have a graduate degree. The hell if I, yes, I do. I got three <laughs> degrees hanging up on my wall, and I love looking at them. Because there is absolutely a business component to what we do. One thousand percent. The public speaking is a part of what we it do. Is. You is. have to fine tune all these things. And another other thing is, after you get done bringing your, your totality of your experience, right, and what you think you bring to the table, sometimes, sometimes we also have to just say, hey, you know what? You're great. They're great. They're great doesn't mean we're all going to mesh in a business sense, right? Agreed. So I can just let you be great over there because every entity doesn't necessarily need to mesh. Doesn't mean you have to be in competition. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work at certain times. And you can look up three years later, oh, now this is perfect. Now we can work together. Uh -huh. So I think that's another thing. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, I'm gonna ask you this question. And you know, we're on a recall podcast. Okay. Okay. What do, what do you think the problem is? Uh, because I can say, and I know a lot of people, um, even when you talk about black gun ownership, 
What I've learned over the last year is that especially because this space has been carved out, I'm not going to say I'm the original one. Shouts out to the Reverend Ken Blanchard. Uh, what I can say is I think I've been instrumental in making sure that this space was open for people. Okay. And what I've seen uh, from the whispers in the walls is a lot of individuals that are coming up or trying to find their way, maybe they get a little high streak, but they're, they're new, they're newer, you know, been around for a couple of years. Right. It's a lot of conversation about the current black men, especially that are in the space are sellouts. They don't do enough. I can do it better. And there seems to be with that attitude, there seems to be a lot of fighting, right? Like, oh, I'm better than so-and-so and I'm better than so-and-so and I'm better than so-and-so. So I want to know from your perspective, one, A, how do you address the, the ones that are already there or sellouts because we don't perceive them doing the things that they say that they should be doing. You're not, I don't get to put my hand up your back and control you, yep. right? One, how do you address that mentality? And then two, how do you address the mentality of the infighting, if you will? The infighting. The infighting, like, oh, guess what? You're a black man and I'm a black man and I should be fighting you before I can take your spot, step on your shoulders, crush you in a mulch because I want to be Highlander. I'm, Man. there can only be one. <laughs> All right, it's a recoil podcast. He know, he know he did something with this one. Uh -huh. he, know, he know he did something with this. All right, so listen, you know, I've said this for years. I don't know why we compete with each other. I don't know why. Now, there's nothing wrong with healthy competition, right? But in, but in a sense that promotes growth, not in a sense that promotes adversaries. Like, we don't want to be adversaries. We need to be aligned to make each other better. And honestly, that's, what, that's where a lot of the success of, of Guns Out came in year one is because when you watch me and Shermichael training and videos, we're always competing against each other. We're talking right. smack against each other. We're competing. He wins, I wins, he wins, whatever. But we're all getting better together, right? And I, you definitely don't see enough of that in the black community. I got to be honest you see one of two things. You see people that just sit back and they watch and they root and they choose the side and they usually choose the side that's closer to and more relative to their skill sets, their intellect, their financial means or their background, right? They stick to those areas. So therefore, they rarely come in contact with elevators, people who are actually elevating in different spaces. So again, that goes back to what I say about you gotta take it back into the community so they can see, feel, touch, interact with you. We learned that when we went to Chopper Day, right? We went to Chopper Day and we, we, were, we were apprehensive a little bit because we didn't know enough about it. We had never been before Guns Out or even early on during Guns Out. We just, but we went there. They, they invited us out, we came. But we went and we brought everything about Guns Out, all our expertise, we brought a whole bunch of custom firearms, high-end firearms, and we went. We didn't have any expectations. When I tell you, so many brothers and sisters came directly to us and asked us so many questions about how to train, I zeroed probably a dozen pistol optics that day. And I, when I tell you, these guys were running around with red dots that were nowhere near zero. And that's just wrong, right? That's just wrong. And that's the other thing too. Why do we run to go out and just buy something because it looks cool, you got it, and now you don't even know the first thing about how to use it? Right? I feel like, and, and that's another part of our journey. We made sure to show that we didn't know everything up front. It was important for us to train up front. And we trained with some of the best in the industry because it's possible they do want to share that information with everybody. It's not just for one type of person. Right. And we wanted to show the proof of that in our work. So we did. And again, went to Chopper Day. We were so well received. These people embraced the hell out of us and they showed that they were hungry for knowledge. If we weren't there, who else was going to do that? Who else was going to do that? You. You see what I'm saying? Right. Him. So that's how I summarize that. All right. You know, I, I gotta I gotta say, and I didn't even know this conversation was gonna go this way, but that's that's why we just talk. Oh, I expect it from you, bro. You <laughs> you will never what? you will never shock me. Oh. I always wait for you to kick the brakes off, but that's what's up. Let's go. What you got? I, I think that there's a there's a, there's because there's a lot of problems we can talk about. Another thing that I find to be disheartening, and I gotta be honest, is the fact that we would rather be entertained than educated. Yes. yes. Now, but there that's is, where edutainment comes in. Edutainment, that's where I was gonna go. Okay, go there ahead. is a great blend yes. where you can do both, Agreed. right? There is a great blend where you can do both. Yep. I think that when individuals are getting into this space now, it's easy. So you mentioned the word intellect earlier, right? And, and not to be insulting toward anybody, it just means your intellect in this area. You could be a rocket scientist. Maybe yeah. you don't know a lot about guns. When you get into this space, I want people to understand something. When you aren't willing to be educated, properly or edutainment when you're not when it's just got to be oh i just want to get the gun and blast it and yeah. do the thing right yeah. 
I want you to understand something and listen to me, America, especially minority America. When you walk out of your home, you represent way more than just yourself. Yes. When you put a gun in your hand, there are individuals, you can call them anti-freedom types, you can call them any is that you want to call them, but there are individuals that are putting their prejudices and stereotype on you, waiting for you to give them the confirmation bias that they are seeking. So when you will not take serious being educated on something, remember this, a gun is one of two things, and I tell people this all the time, it's either a tool of freedom or a tool of oppression. Nothing is worse than oppressing, oppression than when you oppress your damn self. So if you yeah. think that you're going to walk around with something that has God-given power mm -hmm. to take life, and you don't want to be educated around that, but what you want to do is start a GoFundMe when your ass get locked up, what you want to do is then start caught emailing, having your people email us, and then when we can't help you out, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, I ain't really for the cause. No, you need to seek the education. Not saying you need to be bored while you're doing it, but you need to seek the education be an educated gun owner because on the side of the road trying to plead your case ain't the place to do it. On the side of the road trying to tell that cop what your, what your rights is and you ain't been educated ain't the way to do it. And when you go somewhere, and I'm going to say this and I mean it, and when you go somewhere and you like, oh, those white boys over there think that they doing the thing, just understand this. Those people might take what they're doing serious. Maybe they don't, but maybe they do. So how about instead of putting your insecurities on someone else, you come to someone. I am one of the, and I will say, one of the best educators in this country. I'll let my nuts drop on that. So why don't you come take a class, get educated, that way when you go out, you can take that information and guide yourself and the representation that you stand for, that you should stand for, serious. That way, every time somebody sees us, it is not the moniker of a rap video. Nothing against rap, listen to it myself. But I'm saying that's not the way. It's not what they saw in colors. It is a positive represent representation of what minority gun owners look like in America. I can run a drill like you, I can form like you, and I know more about the science than you do. And the fact that you won't study that and get educated is your own damn fault. Nobody else. So swallow your insecurities, get educated, and move on. Now, to you. That's, that's the KD that I know and love. That's what he does. Man, I get this on the phone like twice a week. No. Well, I'm normally trying to keep you well, out of prison. Well, well, I'm glad you exist, sir, because if you didn't, I might be getting it. I don't need that in my life, not at this point. To add to what he's saying and bring it to real life, uh -huh. he's also been a part of this. I have a group called Kids the Kings. It, we literally focus on educating young black men about mm -hmm. firearms and showing them the nepotism that they need. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason why I can say and appreciate the content that you guys put out because I don't have to use other people in this industry that aren't necessarily doing it the right way. Yeah. I can show them y'all's videos, his videos, and I've personally had to threaten gang members to be like, yo, you're not going to be the influence on these kids. I have another group of black men that can do that for them. Yeah, yeah. And the more of us that are able to be that example for them, the better. So whatever you're doing, brother, keep doing it. Keep getting the support that you get. And we'll talk about some other stuff behind this. And I know we, we got to go on one minute. Go ahead. Okay, so listen, yeah, I'm glad you gave that call because I want to take my glasses off and I want to look in the camera and say this. Listen, we're not the only ones that are out here doing great things in the firearms community, in the elevation community. Like, we're, we're, there's a lot of us that are doing this. But the thing that we need to do is we need to be actively promoting this type of culture, this type of lifestyle, this type of education, this type of behavior. And I'm talking about getting in the comments. I'm talking about saying that you watch the video. I'm talking about letting the presence be felt that people are consuming this because this is how they want to act. This is how they want to live. This is how they want to behave. These are the things that they believe in. Because the one thing that I will say with all the success that we've had is that people are watching silently. They are not participating. They need to participate. So I'm saying that directly to the camera because I've been wanting to say that. All right, and number two, about the training and everything, the thing that a lot of people discount is that when you get properly trained with a firearm, it will absolutely enhance everything about your firearms experience. Yeah. Training not is the fun on, part. Not yeah. only the self-defense aspect of it, but also the fun yeah. and your ability to pass on that knowledge as well. So training is the cornerstone to being a responsible gun owner. So like he said, get off your butts and all those other words he said earlier, do that stuff he said, that's what it is. Yeah, uh, hey, look, so uh, before we go, so I had to, I had to bring myself down. I apologize. Yeah, man, cool. you got you, you, know, you, you was, you yeah, was raising up, you was raising up about this chair. Yeah, I you like, know, oh, you man. Hey, hey, they, they call me Unk now. Hey, so I, I had, you know, that, I, uh, Unk, you know, had to, yeah, had to go talk oh, to him, man. God. And I say that, guys. Listen, we we are saying the things we say because, believe it or not, we love the Second Amendment. We love the American people. 
And there is a group of American people that don't understand with the politics in play, man, if you don't do this thing the right way, you are gonna be nothing but a victim to the system. Gun control historically is founded to keep your black ass from having a gun. Factual. Started with slave codes. Gun control, a lot of people don't understand this. Gun control predates the establishment of the United States of America. It's a fact. So you need to take this more serious. And the only thing that was bad about it is that, oh, we're going to do it to those people. Nobody realized it was going to be a cancer that now gets us all, right? Yeah. yeah. But when we look at the genesis of it, we have to understand that. But man, look, this is going to be a whole other thing. We're going to have to have you back on oh, and have bro, a whole rap bro, session about this. Whenever, man. Come but on, I got to ask you this. Yeah, talk to me. Fun fact about you, a lot of people don't know. Oh, man. There's a few, actually. Give us one. I was a signed recording artist for about three years. Oh, what, what genre of music? Now, a rap. Yeah. I, was a, I was a rapper. Okay. Who was you signed to? It was an independent label. Okay. But I was on Nationwide. It was legit. But I don't speak about it because it was like, it was a tumultuous time in my life. But it set the stage for where I'm at right now because all the lessons I learned in that sphere totally translates over to what we're doing right oh, now. Oh, thank, thank you for saying that because I tell everybody, the rap game and the gun game are... Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, there's a lot, lot of... Lot of they, they, they're, they're definitely are some parallels. Next time we have you on, man, you have to drop some balls. Nah, I don't do that no more, dog. I don't do that <laughs> no right, more, dog. So, I hung up the mic a long time ago. There are people in the recall network that might not have heard of uh, Guns Out before, okay. you know, so I would like for you to tell them because they're probably interested now. Uh, uh, please, <laughs> tell them how, how do they get involved? How do they find you? Guys? Listen, man, GunsOutTV.com, everything you need to know about us is right there. We have so many offerings and yes, we do dabble in the premium right so we got stuff for premium people but we got stuff for everybody else too gunsouttv.com subscribe to our newsletter it keeps you abreast of everything that we're doing at gunsouttv across all social media platforms including youtube go subscribe and get in the comments and let us know that you're watching let's go and i would also say when he said about him and uh, sure michael competing with against each other i've stood on the line with <laughs> <laughs> that is not for the camera. Uh, <laughs> like, they were absolutely go at it. Oh, yeah. Mr. Keys, man. man. It's always a pleasure, always bro. A pleasure, and, I, brother. and listen, man, much respect. I always give you your flowers, brother, because you are consistent, sir. Period. Thank Period. You, sir. And All you, right. sir, first time meeting you, bro, but it's for been sure. a pleasure. For sure. Absolutely. All right. I told you guys. Now, you might not be ready for some of these conversations, but uh, Recall's never been shy about them. So, <laughs> Shot Show 2024, this is the Recall Podcast. We're at Gators Hour Booth. Still bringing you premium guests. We'll see you on the next one. Guns Out TV, Mr. John Keys. Let's go.